know, it was very difficult what they had to do. You know, coming in here with very little, little people available, coming in and playing a team that needed to win playoff, you know, pedigree. Mm -hmm. So played a lot of young guys. Um, obviously, they did. A, they went out and did the best that they could do. I, I respect. I got a lot of respect and admiration for them. Um, but that's kind of how we've been all year, though. You know, so I got a lot of respect for them. They played as, as hard as they could. Played against a better team. You know, I got a lot of respect for, for what they've done. They came all year long, and uh, they gave me all they had. You know, no matter who played, who didn't play, it never mattered. You know, everybody that got out there, they did the best that they could. They played hard as hell. And uh, as a coach, and me, that's, that's who I am. That's what I believe in. And uh, I got nothing but respect for all of them. Hey, Rip City. This is Anthony Simons, and it's time to open the briefcase with Casey Hodel. Greetings, Blizzard fans, and welcome to The Briefcase, episode 90 of The Briefcase. I am your host, Casey Holdall, and that was Chauncey Billups discussing the Trailblazers' last game of the season, a blowout loss to the Kings in Sacramento Sunday afternoon to finish off the 2023-24 campaign for your Portland Trailblazers. Chauncey discussing how difficult the season was and using basically the game versus the Kings as a microcosm for the season in that they had a lot of injuries. Quite a few players didn't play in that final game of the season, which we'll talk about here in a moment, which just led them to being vastly undermanned in a lot of games, but still coming out and playing hard and not generally giving up. Every now and then you could probably look at games and say, yeah, they maybe didn't give their best effort. But for the most part, the one thing you could depend on for the Trailblazers this season was that they were going to go out there and play hard, even if it wasn't going to result in a win. We'll do a quick look at the game versus the Kings, quickly discuss the season, lock in the draft lottery odds, put a bow on the offensive rating, defensive rating, and the Trailblazers record versus the spread this season, and hear from both Robert Williams III and Shaden Sharp on this edition of The Briefcase. The Blazers ended their 2023-24 campaign with a 121-82 loss to the Sacramento Kings at Golden One Center Sunday afternoon in California's capital. DeAndre Ayton, Malcolm Brogdon, Tamani Kamara, Jeremy Grant, Scoot Henderson, Shaden Sharp, Anthony Simons, Matisse Thibel, Jabari Walker, and Robert Williams III were all out for the season finale, which left the Blazers, I think, with eight players. They had to sign Taze Moore to a 10-day contract in order to play in that game, which leads them to believe that they were up against the number of players that they could get. I said on the podcast just the other day, I didn't think you could still sign players. Obviously, that is not the case. Blazers had to sign Taze Moore in order to play their last game of the season, Game 82, Sunday in Sacramento. The Blazers started Delano Banton, who got kicked out in the fourth quarter, by the way. Round repair, Justin Manaya, Chris Murray, and Moses Brown. And that's about as much of a recap as you're going to get from me from that game. Kings had a reason to win. Blazers had a reason to lose. Both teams did what they needed to do. And that's the end of the regular season for both. So with the loss, the Blazers finished the 2023-24 season with a 21-61 and record overall and a 10-31 and record on the road this season. Portland won just four of their last 20 games, and with a record of 21 and 61, the Trailblazers end up finishing the season tied with the Charlotte Hornets for the third worst record in the NBA. And due to that, the Trailblazers get a 50.3% chance of landing a top four pick and a 13.3 or 13.2% chance of getting the top overall pick at the 2024 NBA Draft Lottery, which will be held on May 12th in Chicago. To explain that a little bit, the bottom three teams all get the same amount of draft lottery odds, which is supposed to be 14% for the top overall pick. But since the Blazers and the Hornets are ending up tied for the third worst record, they have to split the odds for the third worst record and the fourth worst record. So while they have slightly worse odds of getting the top overall pick than the Wizards and the Pistons, the Blazers and the Hornets have almost the same exact odds of getting the top pick or one of the top four picks as they would if they had finished the season with the worst record. So about 10 days ago, when I told you that there really wasn't a whole lot either way I thought the Blazers could do to improve their lottery stock, I was wrong. At that point in time, the Blazers were ahead record-wise of both the Spurs and the Hornets. They finished the season with the Spurs ahead of the Blazers and tied with the Hornets for the third worst odds. So if your goal in the second half of the season was the Blazers getting the best possible chance of getting a top pick in the upcoming 2024 NBA draft, Mission accomplished. Also, I'm not entirely sure how it works with the Golden State Warriors ending up in 10th, but in general, unless they literally hit the lottery, if they do happen to end up in the lottery, the Blazers will have Golden State's pick at the 2024 NBA draft, which will be somewhere in the middle of the first round, most likely. 
The only thing I'll say here is that they are tied with the Kings at 46 and 36. And I don't know, I can't recall if you are in the draft lottery, if you don't make the playoffs or if you just make the play-in. Is it based off of your record before the play-in starts? If you're the 10th team, but you advance in the play-in and do make the playoffs, does that mean you're not a lottery team? Even though if there wasn't a play-in, you would be in the lottery? I don't recall how that plays out. The NBA doesn't really have a good explainer anywhere that tells you those things. We don't need to worry about it for a while because the draft isn't for a while. So at some point in time, probably within the next week or so, those things will be get ironed out. On an upcoming edition of the briefcase, I'll make sure to let you know. But as of right now, I'm not entirely sure if the Warriors are going to be in the last spot in the lottery or if they are the first spot out of the lottery. Again, either way, very likely that that pick will be in the middle of the first round. Trailblazers will get that pick unless by some incredible chance the Warriors end up jumping into the top four. It's always possible. At least if they're in the lottery, it's possible. If they're not in the lottery, that's not possible. And that pick already is for the Trailblazers. But again, I have a good hunch of what the answer is, but I don't know for certain. And I'm sick of getting these things wrong when we don't have the exact answer. So I'm not going to state anything definitively at this point. But long story short, the Blazers get the Warriors pick this year. It is very likely to end up somewhere in the middle of the first round. Well, no details about that sometime soon. Someone already does know the details of it, I'm imagining. That person just isn't me. Moving on, I'm going to save most of my broader analysis of the 2023-24 season for an upcoming edition of the Blazers Balcony with Brooke Olsendam. But real quick, just wanted to go around a few of the things I did feel like we learned this season and maybe some of the things that we still don't know about this team just yet. So first off, after a rough start, I would say we have a pretty good idea that Scoot Henderson is going to be a very good player in this league. You don't want to necessarily make a ton out of the last couple months of the season because you're getting more playing time than you probably would have otherwise. And with injuries, you're playing probably more minutes than you would have otherwise. Other teams maybe not trying as hard as they would have otherwise. But I think we saw, again, after a bit of a rough start, that Scoot's shooting, his ability to finish at the rim, his understanding of the speed and the pace in the NBA, his understanding of when to kind of try to use his physicality and when to maybe use his positioning a bit more, vastly improved as the season went on. I think even though it maybe wasn't the rookie campaign you would have liked to have seen at the beginning of the season, I think by the end of the season, you're very satisfied with what you've seen out of Scoot Henderson. A lot of potential there. I know he's going to work like crazy in the offseason, hopefully come back a better player his sophomore season and really start to lay the foundation for what he's going to be as a Portland Trailblazer. One guy I would say we still don't know about, Shaden Sharp. I feel like that injury really negated the opportunity to see what Shaden Sharp was doing in his second season, particularly the fact that he didn't really get to play a whole lot with Scoot Henderson or Anthony Simons really makes me feel like this season, while not a lost season for Shaden, definitely not as useful as it could have been, and definitely doesn't feel like some of the questions that you maybe had about Shaden, more just in terms of how good could he possibly be, really got answered this season. That, for me, is the most unfortunate part of Portland's season this year is that we just didn't get a chance to see what Shaden Sharp is going to look like with another year under his belt. I think we also found out that DeAndre Ayton, a very good player in this league, again, after a bit of a rough start to the season, really showed that he is an elite all-star starting caliber center in this league, where the numbers, again, much like Scoot that he put up at the end of the season, necessarily what he's going to put up over the course of a full season, maybe, maybe not. But the things that he did in the second half of the season, seemed incredibly sustainable to me. I think DeAndre Ayton is going to be a foundational piece for this team going forward. If you had any concerns about the way things ended for him in Phoenix and what that might mean for his career in Portland, I think he answered those questions in the second half of the season. Very excited to see what DeAndre Ayton is going to do next season in his second year as a trailblazer. The other thing about DeAndre Ayton too is he's excited to be a trailblazer, and sometimes that's enough for me. We absolutely found out that Tamani Kamara is going to be a starting caliber player in this league, in my personal opinion. Defense, three-point shooting, physicality, just scratching the surface for Tamani Kamara. 23 years old, so he's a bit older. He's got a bit more experience. I think Tamani is a guy that they can bank on going forward to be a starter or at least a very strong player coming off your bench for the next decade for this team. I think you really feel great about Tamani Kamara and what you got out of him this season and what you can expect from him going forward. 
I think you figured out that Duop Reith and Chris Murray are both guys who are going to be rotation players in the NBA. And I think you found out that a guy in Rian Repair, while he's still got a ways to go, is definitely going to be a guy who at some point in time is going to be a regular player in the NBA, perhaps even a starting caliber player in the NBA. Still a very young man, still a lot of room to grow for him, both in terms of his actual physical body and his game. And then I think, particularly when it comes to the veterans, you found that this is a very strong group of players. Guys who, even though this team struggled this year, even though they lost quite a few games, guys like Jeremy Grant, Matisse Thibel, Anthony Simons, always seem to keep a positive mindset in the locker room, didn't let guys get down, didn't point fingers. I think that's a very good sign for this team going forward because you assume that they are probably still a few more seasons away from really being able to compete. So you know some hard times are still probably ahead, but they've got a veteran group of guys who seem very comfortable leading these young guys on that journey. Obviously, things can change in the offseason. And as a matter of fact, I'm guessing some things will change in the offseason. If nothing else, the Blazers have four picks in this upcoming draft. You can't add four rookies to a team that already has a lot of rookies this season anyways. But either way, I think you feel really good about Portland's locker room. And that would be the final thing I think you've learned about this team this season is a very strong locker room. Maybe weren't able to get the things accomplished on the court they would have liked to have, but stayed tight off the court throughout the entire season. That ain't nothing. All right, since we tracked Portland's offensive rating, defensive rating, and net rating all season long, might as well go ahead and give a final update on where the Trailblazers ended in terms of those stats. In terms of their offensive rating, they finished ranked 29th in the NBA this season behind the Charlotte Hornets and ahead of the Memphis Grizzlies at 107.6 points scored per 100 possessions. By contrast, the team with the best offensive rating this season, the Boston Celtics, scored 122.2 points per 100 possessions. In terms of their defensive rating, the Trailblazers actually got a little bit better as the season went on. They finished ranked 23rd in defensive rating at 116.6 points allowed per 100 possessions, which put them in between the Chicago Bulls at 22 and the Indiana Pacers at 24. And the combination of their offensive rating and their defensive rating is their net rating. And at minus nine, the Trailblazers ended up in a tie for 29th in the NBA net rating with the Detroit Pistons. The only team with the worst net rating, the Charlotte Hornets, at minus 10.6. And also in our final betting on the Blazers update, after finishing the season strong versus the spread, the Blazers failed to cover the 17-point spread versus the Kings, which means that they end the season going 39, 41, and 2 versus the spread this season. That puts them about middle of the pack in the NBA. They failed to cover in their last two games. There were six and a half point underdogs to the Houston Rockets and lost by nine. And again, they were 17-point underdogs to the Sacramento Kings and lost by, boy, what is that? 39. So there you go. Didn't end on a winning note in terms of their play on the court, nor in the casino. But there's always next season, folks. All right, well, let's go ahead and get to the exit interview portion of today's show. First off, let's hear from Robert Williams III, who talked mainly about his rehab, his hopes for next season, what he was able to do this season, even though he was injured for the majority of it. Obviously, I'm sure you know Robert Williams suffered a knee injury early on the season, really didn't get to play a whole lot with the Trailblazers this year is under contract for next season. I know the team still has high hopes for a center tandem of DeAndre Ayton and Robert Williams III. So let's go ahead and hear from Rob Will. Always a great guy to talk to about his thoughts on Portland's season and his season, mainly his rehab, his hopes going forward, and what he was able to accomplish and some of the things he might have learned this season, even though he was doing it from the bench. So good to be sitting up here, man. Uh, I'm good, though. Can't complain. Can't complain. Yeah, it was it was pretty tough, you know, but uh it was eye opener. You know, I got a got a chance to work on a lot of stuff while I was put down for a little minute, so uh kinda had to make the most of the situation. What'd you work on? Uh, mentally, physically, being able to strengthen a lot of aspects around, you know, uh my game, my life, you know, to help me uh propel on the court for sure. Where are you physically right now? Like, how much are you able to do? Like, what stage are you at with the rehab? Yeah, yeah. Physically, I just uh, started doing a lot of uh, a lot of on-court workouts, um, a lot of jogging. Uh, can't really go too much into detail, but I'm in a I'm in a great place uh, mentally, uh, progress-wise too. I couldn't be couldn't be more happy. So, um, try not to toot the horn too much, you know. But uh, can't ride the ups and the downs of this shit. But doing good. Rob, when do you think you'll actually be able to? be fully cleared again yeah yeah hoping for you know um 
this summer, hoping for a time in this summer, you know, still gradually working, checking the boxes as we go, you know, um, hoping not to have any uh, steps steps backwards with this, uh, only four, but hopefully this summer. There are any setbacks you expect to be good to go for training camp? Mm. I can't, I can't, can't get into that too much. But like I said, I'm in a great, great place mentally, you know, physically, and uh, I'm feeling good. Does part of you just not want to look ahead, like just because it's been a long year, you don't want to tell us, like you don't want to talk October, you want to talk the kind of, yeah, you know, kind of uh, taking taking step day by day, step by step, you know. Uh, Trying to get the most confidence in each day, you know, uh, build myself up in each day to get to that to get to that day where I'm walking back out there. So, has this been tougher mentally than physically for you? Yeah, for sure. Because I couldn't like, I couldn't really walk. So it was like the first injury I had when like I couldn't like well, I had to like sit down. You know what I'm saying for weeks, like you know what I'm saying months. So, like I said, thought about it a lot, dwelled on it a lot, and uh, trying to come out this stronger for sure. What did you see, you know, being, you know, not being able to play, but like watching these guys all year? Like, what, what did you see from you know, the group? We all looking for the way, you know what I'm saying? But we got we to gotta lean on each other as far as players and coaches. You know, it's hard to do stuff on your own. You know, um, it's hard to just be, be out there on your own, be in your head, you know what I'm saying? And trying to get through anything in life on your own, you, you know, you need help. So I think uh, one of our biggest things in the off season is just coming together, being vocal, being way more vocal with each other, way more honest with each other. You know what I'm saying? Being able to handle stuff like that. What did you personally learn, or what are you going to take from this season, even though you were limited? I learned in my voice uh, it carries weight. You know what I'm saying? And um, more than anything, uh, obviously making myself better, just teaching these young guys, you know, the right way uh, in the league. Uh, I'm not that old. Uh, I say young guys. <laughs> but, um, yeah, just teaching them the right way, uh, the ins and out, the correct way, because it's, it's easy to learn, you know, the, the messed up way, the messed up life in this league. So just uh, making sure they get that and the hard work part of it, man. Um, you know, even though we might be a losing team, not on the hot side of winning, uh, we don't want that to be our identity, you know, so we're going to fight every night. Is there anything you learned about, you know, watching DA and WAP, you know, all these big guys that they got? And, you know, is there anything you learned from them that you could add to your game that you want to work on from watching? Yeah, for sure. DA been in, has been incredible playing in the, uh, in the pocket, in the pick and roll. You know, uh, he's producing every night um, major numbers for us, uh, helping us win. So I've been looking at him with that. And uh, I say with WAP, his patience, you know, it's it's hard not, not getting all the minutes you want or not playing a lot, but – Wop and everyone else on the team, Baji to even the guard play, everyone is like, you know, patient. They're waiting when they get their chance. You know, they, they deserve the right energy. How do you feel the team didn't turn the stay together? Say it again. I'm sorry. How do you feel the team did in terms of staying together? Um, yeah, I think we did. I think we did decent. I think uh, a lot of it was on us uh, older guys. You know what I'm saying? Uh, keep stuff together. Uh, once the older guys do stuff, you know, strictly everybody else will fall in line. But um, I feel like, like I said, everyone was just out there looking for the way, you know, uh, on their own. May have not been like a negative thing, but uh, everybody was just on their own, you know what I'm saying, looking for the way, trying to do their best to help the team. When sometimes, you know, just come together and talk a little bit and you'll figure it out that way. How big of an adjustment for you was it to go from, you know, a situation like Boston where, you know, you guys were in the finals and you were kind of deep in the playoffs just about every year to a situation like this with it being, you know, what it is, kind of a younger team rebuilding. How What was that transition like for you personally? Yeah, you know, uh, every trade is like, it's tough when it's your first trade or whatever. But uh, you just got to make the best out of it. So I look at this as an opportunity is like um, – Obviously, it's the first time I'm on a team where I'm kind of one of the older guys, you know. So a lot of those things that I did learn in my past from those older guys, I'm trying to bring over to um, to the younger guys, you know, part of teaching them to play the game the right way, teaching them to live their life the right way, you know, so. Rob, are you, are you staying here in town, or are you, you headed somewhere else for the offseason? I imagine with your rehab, you probably yeah. have to stay somewhere with no, no, I'm going to be here. Uh, I'm going to be in PDX a whole lot this, uh, this offseason, so, yeah. So there you go, Robert Williams' exit interview. I hope we do see you around PDX this offseason, Rob Will. I've told multiple guys on this team, particularly because there's so many new guys, Portland summers are great. It's always such a bummer that you guys end up leaving during the summertime because that is absolutely the best time of the year in the Portland area. So hopefully Rob and quite a few other guys are going to stick around. Would love to see him here. 
Another guy I'd like to see stick around, Shaden Sharp, who only played 32 games this season due to that core muscle injury that required surgery. Shaden talked about his season, the injury, what he's hoping to do going forward, what his offseason might look like, where he's grown off and on the court, and just generally his thoughts on his second season that unfortunately ended much more abruptly than anyone would have liked. Here's Shaden Sharp talking about his season after Friday's game at Moda Center. Uh, Shaden, where are you at right now physically? Like, how much are you able to do? Um, right now, I can do some contact, um, one-on-ones, two-on-twos, three-on-threes, pretty much everything. It's just, you know, just still getting stronger and, um, you know, being able to move, you know, the way I um, did before. So I'm pretty much, you know, there. Just got to keep pushing. Aside from the injuries, how would you assess this season for you? You know, pretty good. Um, you know, it's unfortunate that, you know, I got hurt, but um, the time that I was playing, I think I did pretty good for my second um, season. You know, just got to, you know, learn a bit more. So going into the off season, you know, just going to work on the things that um, I see need improvement from film and everything. So um, I'd say my pace, um, playmaking still, you know, finding teammates on the court, um, you know, just getting stronger um, and working on my body so I can defend um, and then just hitting shots, making shots. So, you know, working on those things. It's pretty disappointing that you lost so much time growing with Scoot. That was part of the point of the season's development, and you won't play, I don't know how many games are playing, not that many. Uh, yeah, it is. I mean, I want to play with them. Um, you know, he's a great teammate. I want to play with all the guys for real. Um, but like I said, it's, you know, unfortunate that I got injured. So, you know, hopefully in the off season we can, you know, link up and um, work out together just, you know, to build that chemistry back up. But, you know, we'll see for, you know, next season. Do you know anything yet about whether you're going to be doing anything with the national team this summer? Um, no, not yet. I don't know. I'm not pretty sure. Um, you know, I figure I just talk to my family about it, coaches, trainers, you know, and just see um, what I want to do. But as of right now, I don't know yet. So. How have you kept yourself kind of just busy throughout this, just not playing, but well, what's it been like for you throughout this whole process? Just keep, mm-hmm. trying to keep yourself busy on that. You'll get there eventually. I mean, this process, getting injured and, you know, not playing um, the game you love to play is hard. But, you know, I've been occupying my time by just, you know, trying to get my body right and um, doing everything I can to, you know, get back where I was before. Or well, really just doing that, for real. Shitting last year at this time, uh, when you were up there, you, you said that you wanted to be a starter going into the next season. Have you thought at all about what you would like to see from yourself going into your third season? Uh, I would say just being a starter again, um, like I said before, um, and just being the guy that, you know, can help the team win. Uh, compete at a high level and, you know, just get all my teammates involved. So, yeah. What specifically can you take from this season that you can apply this summer and grow into next year? I mean, for the games that I played, I'd probably say, um, like I said before, my pace, um, you know, shot creating and, you know, just getting my teammates involved. So these last games or, you know, the time being sitting out, um, I've watched, you know, players I, I used to look up to and kind of, you know, study them while they're playing and, you know, see what I can, um, you know, take from them and apply to my game. So that's really what I've been doing, sitting on the bench, cheering my teammates on, just watching other guys and seeing what I can do to apply. What, what specifically do you think you can, you've can you seen from other guys or from, from watching film that you can apply to your game? I mean, I'd just say how they approach the game, you know, how they get to their spots and find their shots and how they get their teammates involved and, you know, compete at a high level. You know, KD, uh, Jamal Murray, really just the guys that play in my position. Delano, this season, he came in from Canada, um, came in midseason, and just what, what's been your thoughts on, the, on him coming in midseason and showing sort of that he could sort of play more in an extended role? Yeah, Delano, he's, he's cool as my guy right there. Um, you know, he really sees the floor. Um, he like what six eight, so you know he's a tall guard that um, can shoot over you know defenders and you know like I said he sees the floor so he gets teammates involved and um, you know he just competes at a high level and you know wants to always win so I mean plus he's you know a great teammate off the court you know he's 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 one of the guys that you know everybody you know likes on the team and it's easy to talk to so um, no he's cool. How much have you grown as a as a person? this year um, you know you came to Portland and you know, you're a 19 year old you're 20 now you're almost 21 like from an off-court perspective how would you say you, you've matured this season you know just interacting with fans and 
Um, you know, just being more vocal to fans and, you know, really just, you know, embracing Portland um, as a whole and, you know, just seeing, like, you know, what Portland is, is like, for real. Um, I mean, it's kind of almost like me being back home, so it was it was easy for me to, you know, adjust and um, get used to Portland. So. Shay, you, you mentioned guys that you've been watching, you know, Buck, KD, Jamal. <laughs> this season you had the opportunity to kind of be more on ball your rookie year. You, you were primarily played off ball going into year three. What do you kind of see as far as how your game is progressing the early years in your career? Kind of what, what have you, do you think you've kind of found a path of where you're going to be able to carve that out? Yeah, I feel like, you know, just the things that I've done um, this year and, and last year, I feel like that kind of paves the, the pathway of um, where I'm going, just, you know, mid-range shots, um, you know, layups and threes and getting my teammates involved, so... So there you go, Shaden Sharp's exit interview comments. Shaden, not a man of many words, but I felt like he did a nice job there of kind of giving us a little bit of insight into where he's at, what his mindset is, things he appreciated about this season, things he didn't like so much about this season, and maybe what his career is going to look like going forward. I've said it before, I'll say it again, I don't think there's anything more important to this team's future than the growth of Shaden Sharp. I think he absolutely has all-star potential. I think if he reaches his full potential, he will be the best player on this team. Now it's just a question of whether or not he's able to do that. And that's going to do it for this edition of The Briefcase. Thank you so much for joining me, as always, not only on this edition, but all season long. We're not done yet. We've still got plenty of exit interviews coming up here. Still plenty of wrap-up for the 2023-24 season as we look ahead to the draft lottery, the draft, summer league, and free agency. Stick around, like and subscribe right now so you don't miss any upcoming episodes of The Briefcase, The Blazers Balcony, or Section 113. Thank you so much for listening. I am Casey Holdall. We will talk to you soon. Go Blazers.